Hello, everybody. Thank you so very much for joining me for a live stream on the Screw the Cubicle page. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties this morning. These poor ladies have been struggling with me trying to figure out uh, what we usually use, use a different platform to do interviews uh, and live stream it so that you guys can join in on the conversation. However, that did not work this morning. Something is happening with the internet gods. So uh, we've decided to record it instead on Zoom. Uh, and as long as you guys get the great content and hear what these ladies have to say, I think that that's good enough for me. Uh, so my apologies for all of you guys that were waiting for a live stream, but um, hopefully this will do. Um, so the first person I want to introduce to you, well, first of all, actually, I should introduce myself just in case people don't know who I am. Uh, I'm Lydia Lee, the corporate escape coach at Screw the Cubicle. Uh, and I love interviewing people as a discussion on how ordinary people uh, create escape routes and different journeys uh, of leaving the nine to five or in transition from leaving the nine to five into creating something different with their lives. So joining me today, uh, as you can see, is Wendy Rodriguez, all the way from New York. Hi, Wendy. Uh, Hi. And Amy Fast from Squamish, BC, not far from my old stomping grounds. What? what? Um, and so uh, we will be placing Amy and Wendy's uh, contact information. So if you want to find out more about what they do, we'll talk more about that in this interview. Uh, I'll place them on the post as well for the links uh, to be shown. Uh, and also Amy and Wendy and I really met in real life not that long ago. We've been working together for a little while, Wendy and I anyway. Uh, and then we came into, you guys came and joined me for the next, uh, your next big thing retreat in Bali, which is awesome. Uh, and then we met each other in real life. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what's happened. I, I like to do a sort of like, where are they now? <laughs> sort of segment. So we'll talk a bit about your transition stories. Um, and also, where are you now past the retreat and what you've learned and how you've incorporated uh, some of the things that uh, you, you ex experience really into real life uh, today? Because it's been since April, isn't it? So it's been quite a few months, actually, since we've both seen each other in the tropics. Uh, and for everyone watching, I'm just going to share my screen quickly, and hopefully this will uh, be all right. I'm running a, I'm hosting a, uh, um, open house, a virtual retreat open house, actually, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and if you sign up, you'll also get a replay as well. Uh, but basically what we're going to be doing is walking through people what actually happens in the seven days that we are together. Um, I think what it is is that, um, you know, a lot of people don't know what the retreat's about. Uh, they don't know if it's a holiday, is it a combination of a holiday and a learning experience. Uh, and obviously one of the things that we like doing there is making sure that I know you guys don't have a lot of holidays uh, always saved up for the year, um, but we want to make sure that you know that this is also a learning experience. It's an experience that uh, we want to be um, uh, sharing with you where you get to incubate with uh, many people at the retreat that are basically doing what you're doing, which is uh, planning their escape route and planning the business that they want to start. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing a, it's going to be 9.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Uh, for you guys in New York time zone or Toronto time zone, and then in Amy's time zone of Pacific time, uh, it, it, it will be uh, 6.30 uh, Pacific time as well. So you guys can join me for a discussion and look through some of the videos of what we filmed at the retreat and hear from the participants that have uh, done it. All right, so enough about the retreat. Uh, let's go back into what we came here for, which is all about career transition stories. Uh, so let's introduce what you guys do. I know what you do, but a lot of people watching won't. So let's start with Amy. Amy, could you tell us a bit about your business uh, why you were inspired to start it, uh, and where are you at? Are you working full time? Are you doing this as a side hustle? Tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. So my business will be Amy Goes Adventures, and it really, before I went to the retreat, it kind of, in my mind, was more of a travel and lifestyle blog, mm. but the retreat, it has transitioned into the... Uh, to, for me to create a community of like-minded women who want to challenge themselves and build their confidence through adventure and activity and want to find a group of people to do that with. So it's all about challenging ourselves to try new things and really redefining the meaning of adventure for people mm. because I think that becomes a really scary word for people. Adventure seems so kind of far out of reach and, oh, I'm not adventurous and I can't do that. And I mean, I say that a lot <laughs> about yeah. myself. Totally. And so for me, it's really to help other people as I've discovered ways to challenge myself and realize I am adventurous and that I have my own definition of adventure and it doesn't have to be the same as someone else's. So I really want to help people figure that out for themselves. So I eventually will be creating um, unique 
um, adventure experiences for people to learn, whether it's a sport or just an activity, but mm. to really kind of come together with a community of people to, to challenge themselves. That's awesome. And, I, and it came from sort of your own experience, right? Because you were looking for like-minded women to do these activities with that, that weren't athletes and, you know, like sort of um, really go gung-ho adventurous people, right? Exactly. And I live in a place like I live in Squamish, BC, and it's world-class mountain biking and world-class rock climbing and world-class kiteboarding and uh, backcountry skiing and snowmobiling and hiking. And oh my gosh, there's like every sport to do here. And you just feel like you have to be an expert to even to right. even start. So that's where I was a few years ago with mountain biking. I'm like, I just want to start mountain biking. And I really didn't feel like there was a way to kind of dip my toes in as a Ooh. person who had never, ever been on a mountain bike before. And I finally found a course that I could do it with and it was with women. And it just, yeah, that, that's kind of was the inspiration of this whole thing is that I have a lot of other girlfriends that say the same thing. Oh, well, I can't do that. Or I don't, I don't want to invest all this money in something if I don't even know if I like it mm. or I don't know what to go with. So that's kind of the catalyst for this business is to just create a platform um, and a community that, that that can happen in. So awesome. yeah, and right now it's, it's definitely on the back burner. <laughs> um, I, I do work full time. So um, in my, in my regular life, I work in my family business here in Squamish and I do love it. Like I love working there. And so my real goal for this business isn't necessarily to like escape the cubicle because kind of like my little slice of the office and the people mm. I work with, the job I do, it's more of a passion project of something that I'm really, I really want to do. And so for now it'll be on the side while I work full time. Mm. And yeah, for right now, for the, since the retreat, it's really been on the back burner because I also volunteer for a local community festival and that becomes like full-time life from like for all of July and August. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm keen to get back into Amy goes and kind of ramping that up again come September. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of ideas and thoughts around how you've had to manage all those different projects, which I think people find hard to do, right? And when they mm -hmm. have a full-time job, they are a mom and you know, there's lots of priorities that we have as a human. Uh, I'll be interested to talk more about that with you of how you make sure to stay sane <laughs> during things like the festivals that you're planning and the side hustle. And of course, working in your family business. Thanks, Amy. Um, Wendy, tell us a little bit about you, uh, what you currently do uh, and why you started your coaching business and why it's important to you. Yeah, so uh, Wendy here, um, you know, live streaming from New York. We're <laughs> from New York at this point. Live from New York. It's like the SNL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I've been working full time in sort of finance and project management for over 12 years at this point. And I've always had this sense that I wanted to have a more flexible sort of like work schedule, something that allowed me more freedom to do some self-exploration and, uh, you know, really tap into my, my creative pursuits and travel. Um, and, you know, I've been sort of tethered to the traditional nine to five sort of schedule. Mm. Uh, because there's there's also like this big part of me that desires or requires that sort of stability and so for me it's been much of a slower transition sort of like easing yeah. into it, dabbling with the idea um i ended up getting uh certified as a life coach a few years ago in 2014 because i hired my own life coach at that moment in time because i just felt so stuck with mm. you know what, what should i do um, and through that work of hiring my own life coach, I just realized like, whoa, this is it. Like this is, this sort of brings all these things that I've been thinking and passions that I've been having together. Mm. Um, and so I enrolled in a program in a nine month program and I became certified and I've been, it's been a, a slow churn sort of getting to where I'm at now. Um, and then it got to the point where I was invested enough, enough in this side hustle that I ended up, you know, hiring you, Lydia. Um, and it really was the best decision ever. Um, you know, when you're, when you're, uh, trying to sh shift from like a full time working for somebody else and that's all you've ever known mm. to do it on your own, it's such, it's, there's so much to learn, mm. uh, that you really need the support of someone else to help guide you. And so, you know, the, the help was tremendously needed 
And then, you know, when I saw that you were having this retreat in Bali, it was like, the best of two worlds. One, I get to scratch this itch of wanting to go to Bali, which I know. Um, you keep hearing it during our coaching calls. You're like the roosters. I want to be there. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, why don't, why don't I just go work with her for a couple of weeks there? Why am why? I here? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after actually having those thoughts, you know, your, your Bali retreat came up and I was like, oh my goodness, this is a sign. I'm all about signs. I'm like, right. this is a sign. Um, I need to do this. And it really was a good decision. Some unexpected things happened, you know, when, uh, before the retreat, I had sort of came to this place where I thought I knew the niche that I wanted to focus on. Mm. And it was sort of using my finance background to help people with their money mindset. And then I had this big shift during the, the retreat. Um, and it really, what I really took away with it is like rolling with the punches and like, mm. this is something that I'm creating for myself. Mm. This is not something that I'm doing for someone else. And so if I do have a big aha moment or there's something that stops me and makes me stop and think and rethink what I've been thinking, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay to stop and reassess and realign, yep. um, you know, because you're doing, you know, I'm doing this all on my own and um, it's a, it's a passion, mm. you know, it's not just a job. It's, it's like a passion. It's something that I believe wholeheartedly in um, and so, it, yeah, it was all worth it, I think. Yeah. And, and that is true, isn't it? That's the reality of, of it all. When we, we built anything that's new to us, it changes all the time. I mean, I think both of you experienced this uh, because this idea is not brand new to you, right? Like even when you came to the retreat, you had a direction and you had a yeah. focus. And, and I think uh, a lot of misconception people have is that when something does change, you know, in the way that they create something, sometimes they, they make it mean something negative. It's like, oh... I thought I was going to do this and now it's not that it must mean I'm not supposed to do it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's the sort of self doubt, right? We can talk ourselves out of things really easily when we're so scared of doing the thing that we want to do, but somehow we're also looking for reasons to not do it, <laughs> you know, which yeah. is sort of an interesting phenomenon that happens to us. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, part of the reason of why we want to have this chat is because I really believe in like showing the real work, right? That is not the sort of like, like sugar palm and gumdrops, you know, a uh, magical moment that happens when passion hits you in the face and you're like, holy shit, I found my calling. And then it's just smooth sailing from there. Like, I have not heard one story that is like that. You know, most stories that happen for people who are in transition or in a successful business has come from multiple changes, multiple shifts, as you mentioned, Wendy, and being able to uh, uh, get to that other, other destination or whatever the next destination is uh, purely from actually seeing it from a different perspective, right? Seeing what can be improved, what can actually be uh, happier for me rather than sort of doubting the process. Um, so I would love to sort of know what, you know, through those changes of your life, your ideas, uh, your doubts about yourself, whatever it may be, what do you think individually you guys have had to overcome, right? In terms of whether it's a mental thing or a strategy thing or a planning thing uh, to continue to sort of keep your eyes on the prize and pursue something that isn't anything just yet. You know, you haven't replaced your jobs yet. It's still in transition, right? So how do you keep going for it? Amy, what are your thoughts? So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely overcoming still every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Fear for sure, and huge self doubt. Um, and I would say that that's a huge problem just for me in general. That I'm always kind of doubting myself, and you know, am I capable? You know, will I be able to see this through? You know, is this really different than in something else that other people are doing? And lots of negative self talk for sure. And I think that definitely being at the retreat and with a group of other people who are going through the same things that you could talk that through with really help. And so I think that I'm, I'm really lucky where I live in that I'm surrounded by a lot of successful entrepreneurs yeah. in my family and my friends, just in the community. Like a lot of people come here because of the lifestyle that you can have here sporting wise to build their business. And so there's so many people that I've been able to kind of re-motivate myself through since the retreat, but it's just, for, so for me, it's always about a community and having a connection to other people. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I'm very lucky that I have a group of friends, especially around me that are, they're successful and they share their, like, Hey, I have the same doubts. I have the same fears, you know, and it's good to talk it out with them, but also they're super supportive. Yeah. 
So when I'm saying these things about myself, they're there to remind me that, you know, you have made some big successes in your life. You are capable of doing these things. Mm. And then you're like, yeah. So that's what I have to then do for myself is keep reminding myself of all the things that I have already accomplished and where I've, you know, come to so far in my life and mm. that it's really possible for me to do that again. Yeah. So, yeah, but I definitely think for me, it's having that community of people around me. Mm not just my friends, but I'm in some mentorship groups as well, kind of like a mastermind in a sense. And I think that really helps because it helps for me keep my creative juices flowing for other people as well as for myself, which I get really pumped up about is helping other people mm. solve their problems. So, and I think then for me, I then go away later and go, okay, now think about that for yourself and how would you solve that problem for yourself or how would you solve the problems that you're having? So sure. Yeah. And it is, it's still, it will always be a fear thing for me. I think I, but that's the whole basis of my business. Yeah. <laughs> the irony. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I'm helping myself by helping other people work through mm. these kind of confidence and kind of fear issues mm. and it's through, it, but it's through community. So those two things are really huge for me personally. Mm. And so then it's, yeah, it's it, like I said, it's a passion thing where I get to do that for other people because you know, I am, I, I do like to see the good and everything and the possibility and the positive side of everything. People get annoyed about it when I'm like, but this could happen and this can work. And, right. and so I try to just have to remind myself to do it for myself as well. Mm. Yeah. I mean, cause both of you, your, your, the premise of your business has started from your own struggles, right? Your own need, needed reasons to start it, you know, all solving it for yourself. And now you're in return solving it for other people. And that's what I think brings in the passion, isn't it? When it's something so personal uh, to you. And I think a lot of people, people, when they start passion businesses have come from this place, you know, where they've experienced that same pain or struggle that they're now currently called, right, to help other people with. Uh, and I think it's such a good point, Amy, that, you know, community is one of the biggest things that we sometimes don't think about because we keep thinking about things like strategy. We keep thinking that, oh, if I get that brand message right, that's what's going to cause my business to be successful, you know, or if my website looks really beautiful, that's going to be the thing, you know, that draws people in. But actually, most of the time of what allows people to be successful or not, or go towards the things they want or not, it's all up here, <laughs> you know, of what you decide to see and what you believe is possible for you, right? And sometimes we just can't see our own blind spots. We just can, you know, fear and anxiety and stress and, and the feeling of burnout sometimes, you know, when people are going through a full-time job, uh, it can be overwhelming that you can't even see the light, you know, you can't see the forest from the trees and we have to depend on each other, right? As other humans to help extract us from that darkness when that comes and being surrounded by good people that tell you the truth, but also support you along the way, I think really, really helps you continue to see yourself, right? In a positive light. Uh, Wendy, I'm sure you experienced a lot of that, a lot of being a life coach, because obviously you too coach people around fear and anxiety and sort of making a, a choice, <laughs> just make a choice, but it's so hard. It's so easy, simple, yeah. just do the thing you want to do, but it's not as simple as it is in reality. You know, it's like, I know I want there, I can see it, but somehow I can't seem to pull myself into getting it. Um, what has your experience been? Like, what have you personally in your coaching business and in your side hustle had to learn to overcome in order to keep going for it? And what do you see even coming up for your own clients when it comes to change and transition? Oh my goodness. Uh, for me personally, my biggest uh, struggles have been like overcoming my fear of failure. Mm. And, and also in that exploration of like, what is it that's stopping me from moving forward? Also facing my fear of possible success yeah you know like fear of success out there mm. and then and and what that really because that, that could sound really cliche oh fear of success specifically what that means is like i'm gonna be out there and then now i'm responsible mm -hmm. right like <laughs> now i'm responsible for you know to, for really helping people through some really difficult things in their lives you know right. um and so yeah there's that that comes up and so for me i constantly had to acknowledge myself for the things that I'm uh, accomplishing along the way, because that's another big thing. It's like unable to, to just stop and go, Oh, Oh wow. I can pat myself in the back because I did mm. this. You know, I actually hired a business coach. I, you know, did some research. All those mm. things are little milestones that you should be um, celebrating for yourself along the way, but it's hard for us to celebrate our own little accomplishments. That's again, where somebody else can, you know, comes in and can help you. 
Mm. Um, and also, you know, sort of acknowledging that I have this need for, for plan, for stability. And if I don't have it on paper, then my mind is just going to go on overdrive, making up mm. these excuses and ideas about what's going to happen, wh whether that's true or not, because I don't have it written down and have a plan. Right. Like, you know, one thing that I had to do for myself, I'm in, I'm in finance. I've been in finance for over 12 years. And one of my blinders that I had on was actually doing this budget for myself so that I could see it on paper and, and go, okay, as I transition out, you know, of a full-time job and, and focus more fully on my career, this is what's going to be required of me. Mm. This, this is what it's going to look like. And yes, it's going to be possible. Um, yeah. So yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things that happen and it, it really doesn't matter like how experienced you are at a certain thing. You are still a human being. And, and like you said, there's still blind spots and you still need another person to go to play back what you're saying and show you like hold up a mirror to you and go, this is what you just said. And this is what you just did. And also, uh, you know, really important like something that I really love to do with my clients and I find really helpful for myself is that your brain can only take you so far. Mm. Your brain will, it's chatter, talk, 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 you know? And so it's really important to try to bring all that chatter down and connect with your heart and check in yeah. with your, with your body. Like what, what else is, what else is there? What other knowledge is there, you know, mm. waiting for you to uncover? Yeah. And it's so true, isn't it? Like sometimes fear ar ar arrives or is present. It's when we have missing gaps of information, right? Or yeah. missing gaps of knowledge. And that's what it, all it is. It's not, it's not that you're not allowed to do it or can do it. There's something that's missing in between me and the goal that I want to have. And what is that piece of information? It might be about information about myself, self-awareness, right? Do I, wanna, do I really want to do that idea? Do I really want to pursue this? What could happen to me? if I pursued that, you know, and that needs to come out of your brain and onto where there's a conversation or a piece of paper, whatever it is to get sorted, you know, to negotiate, I think, with those parts of ourselves that may actually have that little chirpy monkey voice that's like, you can't do it. It's like, well, if someone said that to you in real life, you wouldn't go, oh, really? Okay, thanks. You would just go, why did you say that? <laughs> why did you just doubt me? <laughs> you know, but we sort of don't question our own critical mind, right? We're like, oh, it must be true, you know, because I thought it. We don't really yes. go, well, why, why did you, you say that about me? You know, have I ever <laughs> failed you before? You know, sort of similar to what Amy said, it's like, what makes her feel better sometimes remembering or having her friends or supportive community help her remember that, oh my God, she's actually really achieved all these amazing mm -hmm. things that she may have not given herself credit for. So why would this new thing be any different? And sometimes mm -hmm. that negotiation process is really healthy and does help us see the logical part because when we get, we have fear happening emotionally, it, it, nothing's logical. <laughs> it's just how we feel. And, the, and I, I always say this very often, your feelings can fuck you. It's just not always true. It's just coming from, you know, past conditionings and doubt and whatever else that's coming to you. It's not always the actual truth that is happening, right? Hence why these conversations are really important. Um, now, talking about the sort of practical side of things as well. So, you know, a, a big part, I think, of transitioning healthily and not transitioning without losing your shit, for example, <laughs> um, has to do a lot with the mental, right? The mental game, how you see things, what you allow to yourself to feel, and you know, who are you around that allows you to have that environment of healthiness. Um, in a practical sense, you know, there's a lot of things we think about in transition, like preparing our finance, right? Wendy, I'm sure you're a big, big you know, advocate for making sure you feel good financially before you take the leap. Uh, we, we may have boyfriends, spouses, wives, husbands, whatever it may be that needs to be enrolled into our transition journey. It may be around uh, judgment that we have to uh, think about what would other people think if I was to do this other thing when they've known me as a financial advisor for 12 years, right? All these things that happen. What has been you guys' sort of like hurdles that you've had to experience in continuing this transition? And what do you think are some common things that we want to almost like give people a heads up about? You know, it's like this will likely happen to you <laughs> as you create change in your life and, you know, go after things as a side hustle. Like what obstacles or excuses or hurdles that you can anticipate most people having uh, and, and what should they be doing when that arises? Amy, what's that been like for you? Yeah, I think again, really my friends have been super supportive and excited for me. So that hasn't been a super big hurdle. Um, definitely an interesting conversation to have with my dad who I work 
for and with mm. um, in the business. And, you know, we haven't really talked about it too, too much again, since I first got back from the retreat and, and I haven't, you know, and I did, I just said to him, you know, this is something I can work on outside of when I'm needed here. Mm. Um, and then it will just, you know, uh, you know, if, if the business grows and requires more time than I have outside of my 40 hour work week, then I think there's an opportunity for discussion there to, um, to change that. So, you know, I am in a position luckily at work where I am in a management role. I work with my father. There might be some opportunity for flexibility, um, to have those discussions mm. where people might not have that. So, um, I think that it is, you know, but it is an opportunity. And I know a few other people who have been in a similar situation and, you know, they brought it to their, to their boss and it, it becomes, it does become a conversation where there is opportunity. So I think that is a big fear for people that they can't even have that conversation that it's either all or nothing. It's either mm. nine to five or the, their side hustle becomes their full-time, their full-time right. gig. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe it's remembering that, that, you know, if you're working in a business that you have spent time in, that you're a valuable member of a team there, that you should try and have a conversation and maybe there is opportunity mm. for a transition period um, or for some kind of, um, you know, shortened work hours or a flexible schedule, something like that, that you can move towards as you kind of transition yourself further to this, to your side hustle being your full-time gig. Um, and... Yeah, I would say family for sure for me has been number one is just, you know, and expressing the same kind of, you know, being the devil's advocate and, and expressing the same doubts that I already play in my head. And I kind of just say to them, like, you do know that I'm already having all these same fears and I really don't need you to reiterate it for me. Ooh, right. Like, bash yeah. me down a little bit. And further. sometimes they do it because they worry for you. I know my mother does that all the time. She's like, I'm going to warn you a hundred things so that you'll be careful. But inside I'm like, hello, you're stomping on my dreams. <laughs> But it's yeah. like having to have that conversation. Yeah. It's all from love. It's from a place of love for sure. It's just sometimes maybe that's something you have to see too is, you know, I'm not diving into anything blindly. Mm. And I'd love to have your support, you mm. know, as I, as I work on this project. So, and it's probably just a lot of communication of what are you doing? What is the plan? Like, and if you've thought of all these things, you know, like we've talked about this and Wendy would have the same thing. It's like, if you have a plan for how this is going to roll out, then share that with them because they're asking questions because they don't know what you're thinking and they don't yeah. know that you have this plan or that, you know, and for me, it's like, I'm, I, I, a lot of times I kind of spout off this idea before I really have a plan mm -hmm. and that works for me. And I'm not jumping, I'm not quitting my job or anything immediately. I'm just saying, this is my vision. This is my dream. And I get excited about things. And then it, I do have people kind of go, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? I haven't got there yet. I will. I'm not going to yeah. quit my job tomorrow. I'm going to think of all these things first. So yeah, for me, I think it would just be, yeah, communication and just being aware that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Yeah. You don't have to kind of cold turkey, quit your job and, and off you go on to your new business. So mm. yeah, but it's always still hurdles and obstacles. I think even once you're through yeah. the transit. Totally. I think the problems change. Sometimes you have higher quality problems. <laughs> that changes, but problems never always go away, right? Uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the whole, it's not all or nothing, because I think people do feel that way, and hence why they take on this pressure, you know, of needing to make it or replace your income really quickly. And that's not um, a reality, right? I don't care what the Instagram marketers or Facebook ads are telling you, six figures in six months and everyone can do it. It's not the truth. If it was that easy, all of us would be business owners, right? The real work, it takes time, you know, and most businesses probably will never make the same amount of money the first year and they have to be very strategic, right? About how they keep that money to themselves or maybe like me, move to Bali so the living costs are a little bit cheaper. You know, there's things that are going to be a lot easier to deal with. Um, and I think my own story is a reflection of that. That because I didn't quit completely either. You know, there was a, a gap of opportunity that I found in the corporate job that I was in where I negotiated a consulting role because they needed me and, and I was needed in, in that role, but I didn't want to do it full time. And I obviously wanted to work from home, but I knew that there was a way to negotiate where I could hire someone to replace me. Plus I would sort of take on a particular contract role that still allows me to contribute to that company. You know, they're not losing out on a, on a person while I sort of smoothly transition. And there's always potential opportunities like that that people don't think about because they're, again, pressuring themselves in the all or nothing sort of mode. So negotiating, I think, uh, and seeing 
opportunities to continue to work with your companies while you transition may be an option for sure. Thanks for that, Amy. Uh, Wendy, what about you? What has been, um, I don't know if you've also had sort of the same uh, thing of having to look at other opportunities of being like, how do I, do I still work full time? Do I go down to part time? Do I change jobs? Do I go, you know, on a contract role? Uh, what has this, that been for you? What do you think are the most sort of common obstacles or hurdles that people probably will experience uh, at this point? Yeah, I definitely face those similar kind of, you know, obstacles where um, I really, you know, I think what it is, I started to think of it as, okay, now I have this idea. Now I've committed. How, now I want to get to the end point. So I was like at the starting point and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get to the end point? <laughs> and not realizing that there's like this whole path and journey in between. And there's like, it, and it's baby steps. Like you mm. don't need to, okay, now I have this idea. Now I need to be a successful business owner. That's not how it happens at all. You mm -hmm. need to clarify your vision. So, you know, yeah, it's going to take time and it's going to take uh, research. And, and you can like, you know, like you say, Lydia, chunk that down mm. and just like one baby step at a time will get you. It's it, in thinking of it as, more as of a marathon than a sprint is probably yeah. a good idea. Great you analogy. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Take that uh, pressure off you. <laughs> definitely. Take that pressure off of you. But our minds do that because right away, you know, our minds are like, oh my God, how are we going to eat? How are we going to live? You know, <laughs> we're going to be on the street. And it's like, whoa, this idea just started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But your brain will take you there because it just yeah. goes into mode of, oh no, the things that we know is changing. Mm. what we know is changing and I'm scared and I want to mm. keep you safe. And so, um, it's like probably a really good idea. It's also just like when, when those thoughts start to come, write them all down, all those fears. Oh my God, I'm going to live in the street and then go, how realistic is that? Right. How likely is that I'm going to go live on the street? I did this for myself right. and I'm like, okay, how realistic is it that I'm going to end up on the street? Actually, that's not realistic at all because I have a best friend who would let me crash on her couch. Right. I have a mother. Yeah, <laughs> you know, who would also let me crash in her Someone couch. will and take my, me in. <laughs> you know, my mom will take me in. It might yeah. not be the most fun, you know, situation, but I'll make it. Mm. And then I'm never going to be able to take care of myself. That's a lie. I have mm. tons of experience, years, mm. decades of experience. I could choose any of my previous careers to go back to if I if I if I wanted to do that. If not, mm. mold it into something completely different. Mm. So just taking those fears and writing them down and going, how realistic is it? And how would I address it if it really happened? Yeah. We'll just start to mm -hmm. ease those crazy fears that come up, you know? Yeah. That is such good advice, Wendy. And I, and I think it's so true because all these thoughts are happening. We can't avoid them. And actually the more we ignore that voice, the more it comes in like with like a loudspeaker, like, hello, um, hear me. <laughs> you know, you can't, it's almost like it never goes away unless you have that conversation you know, internally, right, with yourself. And you're right, it can, it can be logical. You can talk, you know, you don't have to be like, well, let's just recite this mantra and hopefully it goes away. It can be right. a logical conversation. It's like, well, uh, you know, do I have, like in Canada, we have, you know, uh, like welfare in case, like if something right. ever happens to you, but how likely are you going to have, you know, that's going to happen to you. I have a yeah. university education. I can probably get a part-time job if I needed to. I could mm -hmm. probably expose my services on Facebook and somebody will hire me for marketing, mm -hmm. you know, or something like you can always make it work, but you have to sort that out. Right. And yeah. let that brain sort of tell you those problems and then be like, okay, let's be almost like a, a bit of a solving detective and go, what are the many ways that I could be putting into play to not have to be, to not ever go to this worst case scenario that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Um, so let's talk. The last question I have is sort of about you guys. Is, you know, you talked about a plan, right? You, you said one of the things that I think, Amy, you mentioned this, that, you know, one of the things of how you can converse with friends and family or keep them not worrying about you, that you've sort of, you know, started this new thing or even with you, Wendy, um, you know, for you to feel safe, right? Like in order to continue to persevere your coaching business while you're working full time, we needed to have a plan, right? We needed to have some sort of vision. And you may not be doing it, you know, exactly to the deadlines that you set because life gets in the way and that's really common as well. But you have a vision of how this may pan out. And a lot of what we also discuss at the retreat is, you know, my, my, my whole style is about let's go with the simplest, leanest way of getting you out there without overcomplicating it. 
right? Like we beta test in the, in, in the, in the leanest way possible. What has been you guys' uh, vision of your plan of how you would slowly introduce your business, slowly get your first client, slowly just get exposure in a way about what you want to do and, and, and what has been your simplest form of that um, expression so far in your business? Amy? So uh, when I got back from the retreat, one of the first things I did was I sent out a survey to, I had a Facebook group of girlfriends um, that was basically a, a, the beginnings of Amy Goes, I guess, a less formal version. And I put up the survey out there just asking some questions on, um, you know, how likely were they to try new things if the opportunity presented itself, what types of things kept them from doing it, um, what are the things that they participate in now, what would they like to learn more about and um, sent it out through a couple other friends as well and got some good responses from that. And then really I kind of put things on the shelf, but the vision really is to uh, utilize my local connections. I know, or I know someone who knows, um, you know, paddleboard coaches, mountain bike coaches, rock climbing coaches, all these things. So um, it is, I'd like to leverage those connections and kind of make some partnerships with those people to create these unique experiences and just test it out because, um, you know, I've already had people say to me, when are you going to run a mountain bike camp? And I mean, I'm not the one running it because I'm not an expert, but you know, they want that style that I've been talking about. So it's really just kind of been putting feelers out there and, and mm. seeing where it goes. So I think that it would go over pretty well. It's just a matter of finding the time to, to really put the effort in and make it a solid thing because I don't want it to, to just be, you go and learn the activity or the sport my vision for it is there's so much more because the whole thing is about the community and kind of really getting into this skill, but also being with people who are like you. So being with other beginners, being in a space that you're not intimidated, that you're not, you feel safe. Mm. Um, it's creating that whole experience. So there's some before and during and after work that I'd probably have everyone in the group work on as well, which I need to create. So that's kind of the next step is creating that full package and then connecting with my, network of, of coaches to see, um, who wants to partner up. So yeah, that's yeah. the vision. For so maybe something this fall, we'll see. Yeah. I think that's great that you're starting with low hanging fruit community, right? Which, which is like not looking into other cities or other areas you're not familiar with. You're starting at home, starting mm -hmm. with where you live, starting with people, you know, that trust you already. And sometimes that's actually the easiest route to get your, the word out there about your work, right? It's people who know you and can trust you and rely on you for certain things. Uh, and starting there and having almost like your beta test to be your local people. And then once you get a, a system together and you, once you know how every adventure will roll out, what's the prepackaged stuff, what's the during stuff, what's the post stuff, then you run it all over again with, you know, new partners or people that are in sort of unknown territory. Yeah. That seems easier for you to start, right. Than, than anything else that's beyond Squamish. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other thing, I mean, in my grand vision, I'd love to have a, like a video series of Amy go and does whatever, because, you know, as I've been learning these sports, I find myself to be slightly awkward and clumsy. And I find interesting ways to like fall off my mountain bike or interesting right. ways to climb up the, you know, the climbing wall. And people say, well, how did you get like that? <laughs> and so I think that, you know, just to be the guinea pig and show people that right. I'm not, I'm no expert and I, I can still come out and have fun. And there's so many ways to do it as a beginner. So that in the grand vision will be, will be part of it too. But for now, just even starting like a video diary of yeah. me go on these adventures and just before and after, because a lot of times before I freak out internally and I have these elaborate conversations with myself about how I will get out of doing this crazy thing that I've signed up to do and, and just talking myself off the ledge and then like negotiating with myself of, well, okay, go do this and then this. And, and so I think sharing that with people and just sharing what I go through, mm. just to let them know, like, I'm not, I'm not some, you know, Olympic athlete, some extreme athlete. I'm, you know, kind of every girl. Um, and to connect yeah. with people. And I love that because I know videos for you are fun, right? Like, you know, something that you would have probably done to show your friends anyway. And it's such a great way of looking at marketing that way. It's like, hey, I'm going to just be transparent and exposed here. But this is sort of why you're here to trust me, you know, and not have to think about, you know, anything complicated like Facebook ads or funnels or anything like that. And just going really raw and authentic. Like, this is who I am. This is what I represent. And if you're 
you like it or you're cool with it, you're probably going to be interested to know what I might create next, you know, and that to be organic like that sometimes I think is the simplest way to start. Yeah. Very good. I'm a goof. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might as well show it. <laughs> uh, Wendy, what about you? How has it been for you? What has been your, your own formula of getting yourself out there and, and getting your first clients and being more courageous, you know, in sharing your work, uh, even when you don't have it as a, as a full-time gig right now. Mm -hmm. Um, the first like most basic thing that I started doing is actually calling myself a life coach when I introduce myself to people. Ah. When they ask me what I do instead of, you know, defaulting to the day job, mm. it's really starting to embrace this, this, you know, this new thing that I'm doing. Mm. Um, and in doing that, people sort of start asking you questions and they may become interested. Um, and really when you're starting out, and you're just like looking to test out your ideas and start to get more comfortable and more confident, just reaching out to friends and family. Mm. You know, like after the retreat, I created this email announcement that I sent out to friends and family, letting them know, hey, you know, remember I'm taking this on, here's my journey, how I got here. I'm really looking to, you know, to start picking up more clients. So if you know anybody, refer them to me. So going out to the people that are closest to you first is probably your best bet instead of worrying about oh my god how am i gonna reach hundreds of people or thousands of people out there it's mm. just first starting with those that are near you and really building up your confidence because that's another thing that might rear its ugly head is that imposter syndrome yeah of, you know, who am I to be doing this? And, and um, really, that's just lack of experience. Like, would you do that? Would you say that about a job you spent five years in? Probably not, because you just spent five years building up your confidence. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing with this new thing. It's like, you got to put in the time yeah. um, and be gentle with yourself in the process. You know, don't, don't um, beat yourself up about, oh, I should be charging a certain price. Don't worry about that. You know, first worry about just gaining confidence, getting comfortable, reaching out to people that are close to you. And as that happens, you will start to understand better who it is that you serve, who it is that you want to serve, how it is you want to serve them. It'll, it's a really good opportunity to keep refining. And organically, you'll start discovering what's the next level, what's the next step of getting mm. myself up. Yeah, so true. I love that. Um, because I think, you know, you're right. Like most people, we forget that even if we've been a 20-year veteran in an industry, when we start a business, we're like year one again. We're like an intern in our own company. And we sort of have to get, eat some humble pie, right, in the beginning of time. And it ain't sexy. You ain't, you, you're going to be a beginner again. And it's hard for people to almost digest that sometimes. And, and, and I think you're right. Like the only way that you can gain confidence is to actually start working with people. It, confidence will just never come if you just sit in your living room and go, I hope I'm confident. You know, it just doesn't work like that. You know, like there's no magic pill to swallow. And so clarity and confidence comes from action. You know, like it's cliche to say that, but it truly is because for our reality to change, we have to actually do something different. <laughs> and something different is getting off our couch, getting off the laptop, getting off the trying to write that sales page for the hundredth time and actually just start telling, like go and help people for free even to start, you know, to get an experience and be in the vicinity of that expertise so that you can grow and learn and be better at it. Right. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, I can talk all about the imposter syndrome and what happens during that time, but I think I want to save that for another chat show and maybe have you girls back again, because I think that is a big topic that people have, you know, when they switch jobs, they switch careers, they switch industries. There is this doubt of like, who am I to do this? I am an imposter. You know, what if people found out what I did? And that, it, that topic, I think would be such an in-depth topic that we can be speaking about. So if you girls are interested in that, I would love to get you guys back on and um, have more people sort of talk about this discussion because it's something we don't talk about because it's almost embarrassing, right? And it's sort of like, we don't say that when we're starting out because we don't want people to judge us, but it is a hidden fear you know, that we deal with and harbor inside of us. But I think uh, more of us have to talk about this and know that it's normal, that, that you're not, uh, you know, a fraud at all. And, and here's how to sort of overcome that uh, by, by looking at it in a way of like, you, like we talked about, this internship. You're now currently starting with your own company and only playing in that field rather than trying to be an advanced learner, you know, which is a, a, a bit of pressure. Um, any last words for people that are about to start their transition journey or are um, in the midst of site hustling as they work a full-time job that you want to share before we take off for the day? Amy? 
Well, just kind of on that same topic of the imposter syndrome is just that I don't even know when it started, but probably in the last say six months, just even diving deeper into a few other kind of, you know, um, entrepreneurs, digital entrepreneurs or whatever, and seeing kind of the almost the behind the scenes of their business and realizing, oh, okay, so they don't always know what they're doing. They're not like having 10,000s or, you know, 100,000s followers on their Facebook page or their Instagram or whatever. They're, they're in that process of starting out still as well. And they're making a go of it. Like they are doing what they're setting out to do. And so it's just interesting to have that kind of behind the scenes look, you know, even kind of connecting with you in person in Bali and just seeing kind of, you know, getting that insider view of someone else's business and where they're at. Mm. You go, okay. So it's not perfect all the time. They don't, they're not always confident. They're not always super self-assured. They're not always hundred percent sure of where it's going. They have made shifts. They've made changes in the course along the way and they're having a great time and they're making a difference to people and they're serving other people and they're, and they're building this business. So I think it's just remembering that as well is that just because I'm a beginner doesn't mean that everyone else is an expert. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole community of people out there that have done it already that will turn around and give you a hand up, right? They'll help you and give you some inside information as well. So I think it's, I mean, for me, one of my biggest things in my life, I, I'm, I have my core desired feelings through the desire map, Daniel Laporte. And one of my words is connected and it is all about connection for me. And so that's why I ended up coming to the retreat because I love personal connection and connecting with people that way. That's why I'm probably going down this path of creating this business I'm doing is because I want to feel connected. And I also want other people to be connected. That's why I'm using my network because I like that. I like bringing people together to build other things. And so for me, that's another thing too, is know why you're after what you're after. Mm. Like, is the business the goal or is it something else? You know, and for me, it's I'm just this year about these feelings and I'm, I've made a lot of decisions based on those feelings and I feel so much further ahead this year and in my life choices than I have in a long time. So mm. yeah, if you have, if you haven't already go check out the desire map and figure out what your are yeah. are. Yeah. Right, that'll probably help, but yeah, it is just for me, it is about surrounding yourself with people and, and realizing that, you know, you don't have to do it alone. Someone else has been where you are. Someone else is where you are. And mm. there's a people out there to connect with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's no one's a mythical creature. You know, everyone started where you are. They are moving imperfectly. That's the only difference. If they seem ahead of you, it's because they're moving because they're fucking up as they're going along. And that's okay. You know, and so it's, it's, it's no one's ever perfect. I don't think I've ever met any business owner that's perfect. I mean, I definitely, I mean, people may not see it, but tons of things happen. I mean, just like this morning, you know, we couldn't get on this live stream. I could have, have a freak out. Uh, but you know, it happens. It's just, you roll with it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's, I think, and you need people around you to help you roll with it. It, you know, at times as well. That's great, Amy. Thank you. Wendy, what about you? What's your last final thoughts for people in transition? Yeah. Um, be kind to yourself. Um, don't forget to like, enjoy the process. There's a, there's a reason you made the, this, this decision to honor this desire mm. It's because it's something that's really fulfilling and don't forget that. Don't just get caught up on this. Uh, I'm saying this to myself too. You know, <laughs> don't just get, you know, caught up in the, Oh my God, I'm not doing good enough. Mm. You know, also step back and go, Oh no, like this is, this is great. Like, wow. I can't believe that I'm honoring this deep desire that I have. Mm. And also like actual self care, like actual, a bath, a walk in the park, you know, treat yourself to a massage. You know, Lydia, I know you have your two-hour massages once oh, yeah. a week. Oh, I yeah. learned so much about self-care from you while I was in Bali. <laughs> yeah, you know? very easy to do it here. <laughs> so much easier there. But even when yeah. I do it now, I don't feel guilty. You know, I went yeah. and got a little manicure recently. Because mm. I was like patting myself on the back for a job yeah. well done. Yep, and rewarding yourself. Mm. Totally. That was, that was what I, how I chose to reward myself. So just, you know, make a list of like, how do I like to reward myself? And then every time you make an accomplishment, it's like a grab bag, like grab something off the yeah. list and this and make it a habit just like everything else. Mm, I really love that. It's so true that we have to pay attention to that when we're side hustling because it can feel like a bad hustle. You know, when we sort of take on that mentality of overworking yeah. and over busyness and then all of a sudden our passion business side hustle becomes a job 
And that's not what everyone's doing. You know, that's not the whole point. Um, so I'm so glad you brought that up because that's super important for us high achievers, especially, you know, to know when to pause and take a break and actually reward ourselves. So I think it's something we don't do until we launch, which can take, you know, months to a year to launch a business, but we have to keep ourselves motivated, right? By, uh, adulting and almost parenting ourselves, you know, and going, good job, you know, you deserve a treat. <laughs> and that's great. I want to acknowledge you for that. That's awesome. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, yeah, totally. Or come to Bali and you can have massages every single day for like 10 bucks. So that's <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. This has been great. Uh, I could honestly talk for like way more, many more hours. So, but this has given me a great clue of like, I would love to have more conversations like this with more people. Cause I think everybody's ideas and everybody's journey is very similar. You know, what we experience is how we deal with it and how we share information, I think can help make a difference, you know, as we build our tribe of community here as well. So thank you girls for sharing your story, your advice and your transition journeys. Um, I'll be also sharing Amy and Wendy's uh, uh, links to their work if you want to uh, find out more about what they do and contact them. Uh, and again, a reminder of tomorrow, if you're, I don't know if you're watching a replay or live, uh, we, we do have an open house for the virtual retreat. Uh, uh, sorry, virtual open house for the Bali retreat. There, I said it right. <laughs> Where you can actually see what Amy and Wendy experience at the retreat. You can ask questions. You can talk a lot about your business ideas and what you'll be creating in the tropics. Uh, and I'll also give you guys a link to check out more about uh, what the Bali retreat is all about. You can hear some uh, videos from Amy and Wendy during the retreat. Uh, and we'll be sharing their stories as well in the open house. And it's starting tomorrow, uh, which is going to be uh, Thursday, 9.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And if you're in the Bali time zone or Singapore time zone is Friday, 930 in the morning uh, for us over here. And it'll be recorded for you to replay. And maybe if you two can join as well, that'll be awesome. If not, I'll send you the replay and you can take a look. Okay. Thanks girls for joining me. Have a good night, day, wherever you are. Bye. 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 <laughs>